What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial. So in this video, this is the kickoff video for a series on how to get started using V-Ray to create photorealistic renderings in your models. So I'm going to be taking you step by step through all the tools and functions contained in V-Ray. So if you're looking for the full playlist, make sure you check out the links in the notes down below for the full playlist. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so a couple things. The first thing is we're going to keep this fairly simple um, so that we can keep it easy to understand for a lot of these concepts. There will be more advanced videos coming later, but I wanted to give you kind of an overview of what V-Ray for SketchUp looks like and how to use it. So when you first install V-Ray for SketchUp, you need to make sure that you have it enabled. And you can do, do that by going up to Window, Extension Manager, and you're just gonna find the option for V-Ray for SketchUp. Make sure that's showing enabled, and if it wasn't, click on, click on the button, and then click Apply Changes in order to enable that. And so when you do that, what you should see is you should see three different menus or three different toolbars. And note that this may look a little bit different depending on your version. Um, so my version of V-Ray is V-Ray 3.6. Um, this may look a little bit different, but the tools in general stay the same across the different versions. And so we have these three different toolbars and these are how we can affect our, or we can find our different things inside of V-Ray. So the first is the one you're gonna do the most in, which is the the V-Ray for SketchUp toolbar. And so that's gonna contain things like your asset editor, um, things like turning on and off your different kinds of renders, um, doing some other things as well. Um, but generally you're gonna do most of your work inside the asset editor. Um, unless you're working with lighting or a couple other things. Um, so we'll get into that in a second. The other two toolbars, the lights toolbar, is designed to do just what it sounds like. It lets you access all of the different kinds of lights in V-Ray. So like for example, if you wanted to bring in a sphere light, you would click on this, come click in your model, and then you would click to set your radius, and that's how you would bring a light into your model. And uh, we'll, talk about, we'll talk more about lighting in a future video. And then the last one allows you to create an infinite plane, um, um, work with different proxies and other things like that, as well as adding fur and grass. And so we will get into all of those in a future video as well. For now, I wanna focus on the V-Ray for SketchUp um, toolbar. And so the first thing I'm gonna click on is I'm gonna click on the asset editor. And so when you bring up the asset editor, it's going to look something like this. It may look a little bit different because you have these different toolbars in here or these different tabs, and these tabs do different things. Like, for example, this tab right here, um, this allows you to access and edit different materials. And so that's going to affect the way different materials look inside your rendering. And you can see how right now, this is basically just showing a list of the materials that's contained in your model. And so in this case, there's two little arrows over here that you can click in order to access different options. Like for example, if you click the left arrow, you can access the V-Ray material library. This is where you can access the different materials contained inside of V-Ray. So, and that's one thing to know is there's different kinds of materials. So there's materials that are contained within SketchUp. And uh, so when you apply materials inside of SketchUp, things like this concrete scored, for example, if you zoom into them really close, they're fairly low resolution. And what that means is if you ever run a rendering using something like this material, maybe this one, or let's go to probably one of the wood materials, like this wood floor material, you can see how it's super low resolution. And so if I was to come in here and do an interactive render, just to get an idea of what this would look like you can see how it's not very realistic just because of the resolution and the quality of the texture and so a lot of the time what you're going to end up doing and I'm going to pull this off to the side for a second is you're going to select one of V-Ray's materials or you're going to create your own because if we pick one of these like let's say we were to pick um, like this wood veneer material so we have this object selected and we can right click and we can either add it to scene or apply it to our selection when we do that that material gets applied inside of V-Ray, it also gets added inside your SketchUp model. So you can actually find that material and you can edit that. So you can adjust different things like the size, for example, like how often this texture is getting tiled, things like that. But if you zoom in on this, like really close and 
We'll go ahead and zoom in fairly close. You can see how this is much more high resolution and high quality. And so if you come over here and you look inside of V-Ray or inside your interactive render that we're running, you can see how this is a much more detailed image than what we had before with this old material, which looked like, oops, that looked like this. So you can see how there's a huge difference between the two different material types and the quality of the rendering that they can produce. So more about the material library later, but just know there are preset materials over here um, with everything kind of set up that are gonna look really good. And the other thing I wanna talk about is on this right-hand side, there's options in here to edit all of the different things associated with these materials. So the diffuse map is the actual image that's applied to create this material. Um, so there's other things in here as well so things like reflections and reflection maps and refraction all this is where you're going to edit the way that things look so there's things down below where you can apply different maps to make things look bumpy which makes them more realistic so when we zoom in on our interactive render here you can see how this wood looks really bumpy that's because there's a bump map being applied to that which makes this look a certain way we'll talk more about that in the future but just know that all of the different things that you're going to edit um, have to do with your materials are going to be contained in here. So we'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. The next tab is the lighting tab. And so the lighting tab is where you're going to be able to make adjustments to the lighting inside your rendering. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. I'm just adjusting this material so it looks a bit more realistic. So now let's take a look at our lighting section. So the lighting section is where you're going to be able to edit all of the different lighting that's happening inside of V-Ray. And so if you click on this right now, you can see how this is showing two different lights. It's showing the sunlight and it's showing the V-Ray sphere light that we created earlier as an example. Um, so that that's kind of maintained in here, even though I deleted it out of the model. Um, but it's still in here um, because it gets created as a component inside of SketchUp. So if I was to go into my component section, for example, and it's a little bit of a tangent, but if I click on end model, you can see how I can still find that sphere light that I created and bring it back in. So the definition of this light was in here, even though the actual light itself got erased out. And so you can see how you can edit different things about these lights. Like for example, if I wanted this light to be a lot brighter, you can see how I can adjust the power of this light by typing a value in here. And you can see how as I do this, um, this, this light is reflecting more because it's becoming brighter. And for example, you can also turn things on and off by clicking on these little buttons right here. So if I wanted all of my lighting to just come from that sphere light and not have the sunlight running anymore, I could do that. And so, when we do this, if you click on this little right arrow button, there's other things that you can adjust about your lighting. You can adjust things like your color or other things like that um, in order to really kind of change the way that that lighting is gonna look. You can also adjust things like if the light itself is visible or invisible. And so a lot of the time what you end up doing with something like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, is let's say that you were in a room or something like that and you needed a light to kind of backfill everything. Um, so let's say that I wanted a light and why don't I move some of this stuff out of the way. Let's say that I wanted to create a light in here to kind of fill in that background. What I could do is I could create a rectangle light like this and I could stand it up and you can use this to kind of like backfill light in while turning your lights invisible so that they don't actually show up in your rendering. So a lot of the time you want this extra light that's going to be coming off of this, but you don't necessarily want to see the thing itself. So you can adjust things like that um, inside of the lighting section of V-Ray. So all your lights are gonna be edited in here. Um, your geometry, a lot of the time, what's gonna be associated with your geometry is if you do something like V-Ray grass. So let's say, for example, that I was to draw a rectangle here. We'll go ahead and group it. And then we'll click on this button for V-Ray fur. So V-Ray fur, 
and I'm going to go back and turn my light back or my sun back on. So V-Ray Fur allows you to create stuff like grass inside of your models. And so this is where you're going to be edit, able to edit different things like this. There's also things called proxies, which are lighter weight geometry that get brought in that don't slow down SketchUp, but still allow V-Ray to, uh, they still allow V-Ray to render really detailed things. We'll talk about those in a future video as well, but this is where you're going to adjust things like this. And so... Like for example, if you were to apply a grass material in here, um, you can adjust things like that inside of the materials section. So things like the thickness or how much grass is being produced, you can see how I can adjust this slider in order to adjust all of those things inside of V-Ray. So that's where you're gonna affect your V-Ray geometry. This last section is where you're gonna be able to change things like uh, if you're using your CPU or your GPU. So uh, your CPU of your computer or your graphics card in order to do the heavy lifting of the rendering, you're gonna be able to adjust things like that in there. You're gonna be able to adjust things like your exposure. So you can see how when I adjust my exposure, my rendering down here gets brighter. So you're gonna adjust all those different camera settings and things that have to do with the way the overall rendering looks down in here. And you know, finally, this section over here is gonna be really important because this is where you're gonna be able to do your actual rendering itself. So there's a couple different kinds of rendering contained inside of V-Ray. And specifically what I wanna talk about is the first three options. So the first option is a good old static render. So this render, you just click the play button and it goes through and it just renders this as you go. So you can see how this is going through and this is probably the most detailed render that you're gonna be able to create is using a static render, um, but it's gonna take a lot longer. And also as you make changes, those aren't aren't going to update. However, the second option, which is the one we were using before, and one thing to note is, um, so only the, only the static render, the first option is gonna allow you the option between CPU and GPU. You'll notice if you pick the second option, which is the interactive render, which adjusts as we go, um, that's not gonna give you the option to do that with your GPU itself. And so that second option that we just clicked on, that's gonna be for an interactive render. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna, that's gonna basically update your rendering as you move around inside of this model. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna update your rendering as you create new geometry and other things like that. So like for example, as I push pull this up and I create this object, you can see how this is updating as we go. If I was to, let's say, apply like a glass material or something like that, you can see how this is going to update as we go because it's interactive. And so the trade-offs with this one is this is really good for previewing your scene and seeing what things are gonna look like. So um, it, it updates with you. Ooh, that's horrible. So it updates with you and uh, it's really good for kind of framing your scene, seeing what different materials are gonna look like. Your renderings look fairly good with your bump maps and other things, but it's not gonna be the most detailed render in the world. That's kind of the trade-off um, with the interactive render is it's less detailed, but it's a lot faster. And then the last option that I just wanna mention for just a second is the option for render with V-Ray Cloud. And so what that does is that's gonna allow you to up upload that to the cloud and um, they will do the rendering off-site with their more powerful computers this is a great option if you don't have a very good computer and you want this to happen off-site. I believe there's an additional cost associated with that, um, but that is definitely an option as well. That's probably going to be a lot faster. And so in order to save on time, I don't want to get too far into the different options inside of your frame buffer. The frame buffer is basically a view showing what your rendering is going to look like. So there's different things where you can adjust different channels or you can see different channels and other things like that, your alpha channel, um, lots of other things. I don't want to get too far into that right now. Just know that these options are in here um, and there's other things that you can adjust as well. And then the last thing I want to do really quick is just give you kind of an overview of the way rendering works. So basically what rendering does is rendering simulates light. 
um, inside a model. So it simulates lighting and it simulates the way that light is going to behave inside of a model. So for example, um, if I was to create, or you know what, this is probably a good enough example. Um, so like for example, if I was to create a sphere like this one, and we'll just use the follow me tool in order to create the sphere. So if I was to create a sphere like this one, and let's just kind of take a look at that inside of our interactive render. Um, so if I create a sphere and we have a light up in the sky, what's gonna happen is lighting is gonna come inside this model from wherever your light source is, just like it will in real life. And what V-Ray is gonna do is that's gonna calculate what that light is going to do based on a material. And so the way that rendering works is you set up your materials to affect the light a certain way, and if you set them up right, things look realistic. So like for example, right now, because because we have the sunlight turned on, we have light coming down, and this is casting a shadow onto this face. And uh, one thing to note is if you adjust, you'll notice that those shadows are tied with the sunlight to SketchUp Sun. So you can see how as I adjust SketchUp Sun this way, and I make things uh, either earlier in the day or later in the day that the shadows are adjusting along with this. So this is actually simulating a real sun inside of the sky. And it's also simulating what those materials are gonna do um, when that sun is cast on that. So the other thing is, I mean, really the two biggest things inside of rendering are lighting and materials. And so the other thing that this is doing is this is simulating the way that the sun is going to react or the way the light is going to react when it hits different materials. That's what all of these different um, channels and everything else are, are things telling V-Ray how the light should react or respond. And so in this case, let's go ahead and turn off our sun for just a second. And we've got our... Uh, We've got our rectangle light. We'll go ahead and make that not invisible just for the sake of what we're doing here. We're also going to make it a lot brighter. So I'm gonna brighten this up to something like 100 and I'm also going to scale it out just a little bit. And so you can see how now with the lighting coming off of this light right here, um, it's actually reflecting off of this wood material. That's because it knows that wood is a reflective material, it has a certain amount of glossiness to it, and so the lighting bounces off of this. And different materials react to that in different ways. So if I was to take a different material, like let's say we were to pull some kind of simple concrete material and apply it to this, you'll notice that the way the light bounces off of this and the shininess and everything else is different depending on what that material is. So you're not getting nearly as much shine off of this material as you were off of the wood material. Um, so if you were to get more of a tile material, you see how you get more reflection in here? So, and also because this is using a map, it's simulating the little, uh, the little depressions inside the tile um, as well. So you can see how that's affecting the way that your light looks too. And so this does the same thing with glass materials. So you can see how if I kind of look at the way this glass cylinder works, it's refract refracting this light. It's simulating the way that the light would get bent as it goes through this object. So that's how realistic materials are created inside of V-Ray. And we'll talk about all of those different things um, as we move further along into this playlist. So make sure you check out the links in the notes down below. I'm gonna link to the rest of this playlist for the kind of the start to finish tutorial series on V-Ray. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Was it too much information? Not enough. I just love having that, that rendering conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.